Today we are going to talk about the external jugular vein, anterior jugular vein and internal jugular vein. Let's start our discussion with some veins of the head. This is the superficial temporal vein which joins with the maxillary vein to form the retromandibular vein. It has an anterior division which joins with the facial vein to form the common facial vein. This is, uh, this is the posterior division of the retromandibular vein. It joins with the posterior auricular vein to form the external jugular vein. Okay, let's get a cross section of neck at C7 level. So see if you can identify this is the, the orange color line is the skin and you have get the superficial fascia this is latissima and you can find here the external jugular vein at both sides and here the green line is the investing layer of deep fascia it closes the sternocleidomastoid so we can say the external jugular vein runs in the plane between latissima and investing layer of the deep fascia so this in external jugular vein is where uh, it varies greatly in size and it is often conspicuous in the neck uh, do you know the posterior triangle which is bounded anteriorly by the posterior board of the sternocleidomastoid and posteriorly by the trapezius the anterior board of the trapezius so this is the posterior triangle now you can see the external jugular vein travels as the roof of the posterior triangle. Here it crosses the roots of the brachial plexus. You know that here there is the brachial plexus and third part of the subclavian artery. Uh, it also crosses the third part of subclavian artery. Uh, so used past the menomic has to remember the tributaries of the external jugular vein so here is the posterior external jugular vein P for posterior external jugular vein the mnemonic is past and here A for the anterior jugular vein Which, uh, which is the mall, smallest of the three jugular veins and here this is uh, S4 the supra scapular vein which comes from the back of the scapula and T4 the transverse cervical vein from the skin and the fascia over the posterior triangle so let's uh, see some more details about the anterior jugular vein here you can see it begins below the chin okay and let's get another picture this uh, and you can see the this is the mandible and this is the neck here is the platysma muscle and in this part it is removed and has exposed the investing layer of deep fascia and here the investing layer of deep fascia is cut and they have exposed the pretracheal layer of deep fascia uh, here is the uh, anterior jugular vein and you can see it joins with its fellow this is its fellow um, through a transverse trunk named jugularch. The vein then turn uh, sharply lateral and pass behind the sternocleidomastoid. In this picture, you saw it here. It trans uh, it goes behind the sternocleidomastoid to drain into the external jugular vein so that's it and let's turn our discussion to internal jugular vein and this is a diagram of venous sinus of 
dura. Um, so the internal jugular vein begins at the jugular foramen by the union of sigmoid sinus and the in inferior petrosal sinus. It descends here from there and usually it is the largest vein of the neck and the right one is usually larger than the left one because it usually drains the superior sagittal sinus. Let's move to another diagram. Here you can see uh, the jugular foramen. And here is the sigmoid sinuses. As in here, we can see that internal jugular vein starts as a continuation of the sigmoid sinus. Its upper end is dilated to form a superior bulb. At its lower end, there is also a small dilation with a valve. Here, it is a valve there. So, this is called inferior bulb. So, let's see the tributaries. Uh, here is the middle thyroid vein. And this is the superior thyroid vein. This is the lingual vein and this is the common facial vein and this is the pharyngeal vein and this is the inferior petrosal sinus you can remember them as uh, meds schools let cunning people in but in some books this tributary the common facial vein is known as the facial vein so you can use the mnemonic as med schools let funny people in so these three veins uh, common facial vein lingual vein and superior thyroid vein uh, joins with the uh, internal uh, jugular vein at carotid triangle then uh, let's go to the first picture and complete it with internal jugular vein i will use another color here is the internal jugular vein which is uh, which is um, posterior to the parotid gland and also it comes posterior to the what this uh, sternocleidomastoid here and you can see it receive a tributary this is the common facial vein internal jugular vein receives blood from brain face and neck finally it ends uh, by joining the subclavian vein behind the medial end of the clavicle to form the brachiocephalic vein you can better see in this picture here is the brachiocephalic vein the internal jugular and the subclavian vein to talk about the relations let's go to the cross section which is at the level of C7 you can see here the internal jugular vein okay and here is also the internal jugular vein um, it descends vertically through the knee in the carotid sheath here it is lateral to the vagus this is the vagus nerve and here is the common carotid artery but you know that at C, C7, C4 level it divides into two branches and then the internal carotid artery remains in the sheath so internal jugular vein hmm, it first lies lateral to the internal carotid artery and then it, it 
becomes lateral to the common carotid artery within the carotid sheath and its relations are therefore identical with these vessels. There is some strange thing here on the left side. In the lower part of the neck, the left jugular vein overlaps the left common carotid artery. But the right common carotid artery, uh, it's not like that. The right internal jugular vein remains lateral to the common carotid artery as usual. When talking about the posterior relationships, you can see here the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and scalenus anterior, scalenus medius. This is the phrenic nerve and this is the sympathetic trunk. Anteriorly, there is a skin and also the superficial fascia, platysma, uh, investing layer of deep fascia. This is an ocleidomastoid. Uh, we can find like that. So, going to another relationship, for more details, we get another picture. So, here you can find the common uh, internal jugular vein. It is leaving the skull through the jugular foramen and this is the internal carotid artery which leaves the neck by passing through the carotid canal in which the, uh, the petrous part of the temporal bone. Um, in higher up levels the internal carotid uh, internal jugular vein is crossed by the spinal part of the accessory nerve. Then we find the stylohyde muscle and then there is uh, the internal jugular vein is crossed by the posterior belly of the digastric. Then going down the lower part we can find the omohoid muscle which is in intervene between the vein and sternocleidomastoid. And you can see the anterior jugular vein is crossing the internal jugular vein to drain into the external carotid, external jugular vein. There is also a chain of lymphatics uh, runs along alongside the vein. Talking about the ansar cervicalis here, you can see the super superior root is uh, medial to the uh, internal jugular vein and this is the inferior root of ansasa vagalis it may be lateral or medial to internal jugular vein so let's look at another diagram where the internal jugular vein begins so here is the internal jugular vein and you can find three cranial nerves medial to it so Talking about them, cranial nerve 9, 10 and 11. So, I told you that the spinal accessory nerve, which is the cranial nerve 11, crosses the in, in, internal jugular vein anteriorly before. Okay? The grossopharyngeal nerve descends down, but it pierces the carotid sheath here and leave it. But the vagus nerve still remains in the sheath. Here is, is the internal carotid artery, which is medial to it. So I that's all for this video, and I hope you gain something. So thank you for watching, and let's meet again from another video.